What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I've been doing a terrible job of updating y'all on what's been going on. Motor set back into G8, the old one. Started knocking the other night, and if y'all can see it, on the bed. Let me get some light. So you can see where the valves hit on this side a little bit. But that's right there at the top is the one it hit uh, pretty bad on. But it ended up eating a lifter, and I would show y'all that, but I done threw the lifter away. You can see where it got the cam pretty good. Find, oh, right there. Got that lobe on the cam good. So I ended up just buying another stock bottom end 6.2 and I found a used cam just like I had the Dominator Pro. So just putting it back with the same setup. Y'all ready to see these fancy high dollar ported heads on this thing? That we've been running on the G8 this whole time. Everybody said we had. A, mm, mm. Everybody said we had a big stroker motor. Ooh, we look at that ported head. See the casting. The casting mark. We just left that in there whenever they ported it, just so it looks factory. Good old stock heads. All right, we got it. We can at least crank it dry and, uh, well, dry. No water in it. Just see what oil pressure's gonna do and make sure I ain't got no weird sounds. But y'all cross your fingers. Wish us luck. So we got the new short block in the G8 and I'm about to change the oil because I put, most time I run 1540 uh, diesel oil Rotella or I've been getting Napa lately. And about everything, my lawnmower, G8, the Trans Am, my truck, everything. Um, but after we put this thing in here, I just put a standard, I had a standard M355 pump laying around. So that's what I threw in. And this thing's cranking like 70, 75 pounds cold. And um, I haven't really took it down the road, but just revving it up to like two or 3,000 RPM. It was getting up to... <coughs> Excuse me. It's getting up to about 85 pounds, so I'm going to change it down to a 5W30 uh, oil and see. But I'm about to cold start it with the uh, 1540 so y'all can see the oil pressure. And this is cold start. It's been set in two days. But um, I'm gonna get the oil changed real quick and then I'll show y'all what it's uh, cranking cold with the 5W30 just for comparison. All right, so I'm gonna get the car jacked up and get this 530 in so y'all can see the difference. And it feels good this time to actually, I went from having not enough oil pressure to having too much oil pressure, so. <laughs> Man, look at that nice rusty. Can't remember. Too poor to afford one of them two thousand twenty five hundred dollar tubular K members. That brand new ain't got but a couple crankos on it. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna use that for something else for sure. Let's pray. 
racer. Huh, a pound or two. I had to take this thing out and put a different spring in it. I'm about to take it down the road uh, to see how high it gets. Because I'm really expecting to see over 100 out wide open. But we'll see. So we ended up bringing Daz S10 and the GA out here. We was going to go to Rico, but um, that's about an hour and a half drive for us. And Fayetteville is like 30 minutes. So we ended up coming to Fayetteville. This will be the first pass on the G8 after putting a new short block in it. And we're still messing with Daz, trying to get it dialed in. So I got somebody here that can film, get some footage for us. I know y'all like to see the actual racing probably. If, if y'all like me, you like to see the racing a whole lot more than the talking. That's why I try to keep the talking short and sweet. Can't get nothing done because he keeps going in the bathroom. <laughs> got, to go, got, to go. got him, got him totally around. made the first pass with the G8. As y'all can see, we got all the oil pressures now. But just sent it to the tuner. The only thing, uh, it ran just like it always does. The only thing, the converter didn't lock, so it was down a little bit, but about to run Dad's truck. So the G8 basically ate a lifter, then we took that short block out, bought a new, just ready to go short block, put, uh, and I had to buy another can, lifters, all that stuff. 
uh, but just put my heads back on it, um, put it all back together. It was just found a, a can just like we had, and it was the same bottom end that we had. So uh, just looked over to everything went good. I ran it uh, twice at Fayetteville. Ran it twice at Fayetteville. Um, everything looked good. And then I uh, went to drive it uptown. I let it set like we went to drive it uptown. And um, at the stoplight, it sounded like the, the motor was about to come apart. It ended up being the flex plate was just loose. The bolts were starting to back out. They were sitting all the way flush, but they were starting to back out some. <laughs> oh my. So I slid the trans back um, and retorted all the bolts on the flex plate and put some Loctite on them. <laughs> Putting the trans back in, this was Saturday. Putting the trans back in, uh, I mean, it didn't really take that long. Just pop the header off, passenger side, take start off, get the converter bolts out, slide the trans back, fix it. Um, I let the car set Sunday morning, woke up, and went to go to Fayetteville and went to load the car up and it was in limp mode flashing uh service vehicle or whatever it, it flashes like a couple different things traction control flashing all this uh tried to start troubleshooting and i was getting a code for one of the five bolt um reference uh like open code how I, I can post a picture of it and the ac um pressure switch on the compressor but I uh, ended up just looking around and found real quick that the wires to the oil pressure sensor was caught in between the bell housing and the motor. And that's on that same, I think there's like five sensors on that five volt harness. So we're about to plug it in and fingers crossed that this has our issue fixed and the car will be out of limp mode. Cause man, it's been a headache. So got my oil pressure sensor got, oh yeah, that's nice right there, boy. Little electrical tape around it got wire nuts in there no i'm just kidding i ain't i got it crimped but uh it was pink i mean it was like pinched down right back there uh between the bell housing and the motor about to plug it in and crank the car i'm going to film it because i'm pretty sure and i really really hope that that fixed but we'll see right here as soon as i turn this key on Okay, we're good to go. So, like, um, which does the first time it had ever been limp mode, but like right across the bottom, right here between the part indicator and my airbag fault, where I got these uh, NRG seats in here, it was saying, um, crap, I can't even remember now service vehicle or safety limp mode it was just lit up like a christmas tree and then sometimes like it, it would crank and then it would die right back off and then other times it just try and crank and won't never hit a lick i tried to crank it a couple times uh just and, and that's when i started looking and seen that pinch wire i mean right off the bat Comp hammers to match my back. The back are hammer S's. 